who are with us in person, and those of you who have joined us via Zoom, and I don't know, are we on Facebook Live there? No, we're on Facebook Live right here. We're on Facebook Live here. That's also. Zoom, this is Facebook, <laughs> so, and, and these are the people. Of you, of <laughs> <laughs> Hi, people. Welcome, um, everyone. <laughs> so, one way or the other, we're just so glad that you're with us here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science here for our Wednesday evening service. Let's begin our service with our opening chant led by our wonderful Tina Meeks and Sam Krieger. <laughs> So grateful 
for all the blessings I know we receive in this time together and in gratitude. I release this word knowing it is so. I let it be. And so it is. And together we say, Amen. And so please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen.
I'll see him okay. It doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. All right. There you go, Bill. <laughs> Good evening. Thank you. Thank you, Tina. You're always superb. Thank you so much. Um, you know, this will fit in with my talk, you know, when things start to fall apart. <laughs> so I was watching The Primrose Path on TCM a couple weeks ago, and it's with Joe McRae and Ginger Rogers. And poor Ginger Rogers was came from the wrong side of the tracks, and no matter what she did, she just couldn't get her life together. Whatever she did to try to get her good came for naught. And the idea of the Primrose Path comes from Shakespeare, from Hamlet. It says, do not, as some ungracious pastors do, show me the steep and thorny way to heaven, while like a puffet and reckless libertine, himself the Primrose Path of Dillion's treads. Now, what this has come to mean was, why strive for heaven when it's all going to lead to heartache? Now, when I googled this phrase in the beginning, I was expecting it to be lead to happiness. So I was a little surprised to get this definition. And I don't like to feel like when I'm trying to strive for my good, that it's going to go for naught, that everything's going to lead for heartache. I mean, that's ridiculous. As I see everything fall apart here tonight <laughs> with the technology, what, thing, you know. So the average toddler is told no 400 times a day. And that's just the parents. Then they go to school and teachers tell us things that control us. Relatives and neighbors tell us things as we're growing up. And then there's television. Children, two to five years of age, on the average, watch 22 hours of television a week. Now, some people want to know what group mind or race consciousness is, and it's all this stuff that we've been told. Now, there's some good things in there, but some of it is just opinion and stuff that really doesn't have to do with anything. And this happens to adults too, right? Look at our political situation, right? So you might ask, you know, what, what does this have to do with anything? Well, in the science of mind, we believe that our thoughts have the power of creation, that the words we speak create our life. And one of the things that we say around here is change your thinking, change your life. Change your thinking, change your life. In the teaching of science of mind, we believe things happen in mind first, and then they become manifest. You know, that's why it's called the science of mind. So, now, every thought has the power of creation, but thank God that every thought does not manifest, right? <clears throat> it's more like the sum total, the majority rule. It's that kind of thing. Sometimes, people feel like, yeah, I know what I want, but it doesn't manifest in my life. So I agree. I look at the world out there, and I don't want to, you know, one of the things we teach here is personal responsibility. And I look at the world out there, and I don't want to look at it that part of my thinking has contributed to the sum total of, we'll call it goodness right now out there, because there's a lot of things in the world that I don't like, and I don't want to agree with, I don't want to be a part of. But the key is that we take responsibility. The thoughts and the things that we put out is what manifest the world and our individual lives. Now, when I first came to church here, and I learned that you could pray with a practitioner for anything that you wanted, I thought, oh my God, this is the best deal they've got going anywhere. And you know what? I still feel that way. So if you haven't Pray it with a practitioner. Give it a try. What have you got to lose? And if you really want to be brave, pay for an hour session and see what happens. And then I got the bad news. You still have to do the spiritual work. You still have to take responsibility for your life. You have to forgive people. So, but the good news is that Though this path may be a little painful at times as we work through some of our issues, 
it's really the most wonderful, magnificent thing to have our life, right? <clears throat> so one of the things that got me here in the beginning was Louise Hay. Many people know this book, but you can heal your life. If you're not familiar with it, they sell it in the bookstore. Go check it out. So one of the things that I heard from Louise Hay was that some people, they don't want to do the work. They want their life to change, but they're not willing to do that work. And then they want to complain about why things are the way they are. But if somebody is willing to do that work, then wow, we can have got something to work with and we can really go with that. So I heard that. And I also heard on one of her CDs that she got her start in religious science. So I found the church here in North Hollywood. And it was about three years before I showed up. <laughs> but when I got here, I was gung-ho. And I started, you know, getting CDs and buying books in the bookstore and eventually started taking classes. So this idea of change your thinking, change your life, it works. But in the beginning, it was the primrose path for me. It seemed the things that I was trying to change were just getting worse. But I kept with it. I started to meditate. I showed up to church on time. I started using the affirmations. And even once in a while started to tithe. What worked for me at first and still does is affirmations. Affirmations to me are like the gas in the car. You're not going anywhere without any gas. But you put some gas in it, you can go some places. So I started to see a practitioner regularly. I think I started once a month or when I could afford it. And we teach and believe in affirmative prayer. And affirmative prayer is focusing on the truth of the goodness of God. So if you want to be physically healed of a health issue, <clears throat> you might say, or I might say, I know that God's presence is everywhere and that the presence lives within me, that all of God's healing energy flows through me right here and now. My body was designed to heal and it does that now easily and effortlessly. I give thanks for the truth and I realize this word and I release this word to the face of God to be reflected back to me now and for all time and so it is. Do I need to bring this down a little bit, Adam, so I can hear a little bit there? Is that better? No. No, it's worse? <laughs> All right, let's try it higher. <laughs> so, I breathe a little heavy. I get a little nervous up here. <clears throat> so then I learned with affirmations that the time to use the affirmations is in between the prayers when things are not going so good, when I'm overtired and hungry and I'm not having a great day and my head starts to talk to me with the things that I don't really need to hear, like, well, that's not really a headache, it's brain cancer. <laughs> well, that cough, probably COVID, right? <laughs> you know, that little voice in your head so that's the time to start using the affirmations. Repeat, God's perfect health flows through me now. Every cell in my body is perfect, whole, and complete right here and now. <clears throat> and it all seems and sounds so simple. And it really is. Change your thinking, change your life. Now, life is really good, right? You've been to the beach and the mountains, and the sky is orange, and it turns pink and purple. Then the full moon rises. Think, oh my God, this is the best life ever, right? I mean, life is good. So we really want our life to work. So this idea of the primrose path, that things are not going to work out, or Murphy's Law, it's really ridiculous. So when Ernest Holmes started to write The Science of Mind, when they started The Science of Mind magazine, Ernest Holmes decided to write the what we call the We Believes. And it's some wonderful things about religious science. <clears throat> but I want to focus in on my favorite. We believe the ultimate goal of life 
is to be a complete freedom from all discord of every nature, and that this goal is sure to be attained by all. We believe the ultimate goal of life is a complete freedom from all discord of every nature, and that this goal is sure to be attained by all. That means it works for me, works for you. There's no excuse. You can make this thing work. You can heal any issue. You can heal any pain, any scar that you might have from life. Change your thinking, change your life. All things are possible in God. We believe the ultimate goal of life is a complete freedom from all discord of every nature, and this goal is sure to be attained by all. Now, Ernest Holmes used to say, can you walk on water? No, you take a boat. <clears throat> so seriously, if you have a problem with drugs and alcohol, go to a 12-step meeting. If you've got cancer, go to a doctor. But while you're doing that, see your practitioner. Learn to do this thing called treatment. Learn to use the affirmations. Learn to change your thinking. And if the doctor says, there's nothing I can do, it's terminal, get another doctor. Go see your practitioner. You know, one valuable thing that I learned from Louise Hayworld is that you don't need to let other people's opinions into your head. So when the doctor, you know, when your mother says, oh, that's a silly idea, it's not going to work. Or the doctor says, there's nothing you can do, it's terminal. You don't have to accept it. You don't have to argue with them and say, but... I'm going to church now, and you know what? I can heal this. Why? You don't have to defend any of this. But inside your head, to yourself, just say, maybe for you, but not for me. It's the simplest thing. Whenever I feel I'm getting a static from people, I, I just go right to that place now automatically. Maybe for you, but not for me. All things are possible in God. So... You know, this goal is sure to be attained by all. So why would we want to argue and defend that with anyone? You know, not everybody is going to understand. This is between you and the power and the presence. In the Bible, it says not to throw your pearls before swine. What is your pearl of great price? You know, Ernest Holmes said that you may not understand everything that we're teaching here, but if you could just get one little nugget, one little thing, and bring that into your being, what would that mean for you? What would that do in your life if you could just have that one thing that really brought some serious change into your life? Now, <clears throat> now it's easier to work on the smaller issues and learn how to do things how to do this first before you have to heal life-threatening diseases like cancer. Nobody wants to feel like they have their back up against the wall. But again, if you're in a difficult situation, sit down with a practitioner. Practitioners are trained in holding consciousness. It's a four-year program to become a practitioner, to be licensed, and <clears throat> start taking the classes now. But it's easier to work on simple issues First, many people start with parking spaces, right? <clears throat> One of the things that I started with when I was here was tickets. I, I was, wherever I went, I get a ticket. <laughs> and, I mean, I did community service for cell phone tickets so many times that they knew me, but personally down there, you know? <laughs> and. Every time I saw a police car, I'd go like that, you know? And every time I thought about a ticket, I'd go like that. And so what I learned here was that it's... It, that change, that work that's got to be done, it's got to come from me. So one of the things that I affirm is that I'm willing to change and that the information that I need 
comes to me easily and effortlessly in a way that I can understand. So I'm sitting here in class, and this older gentleman comes in, and he says, driving down Sherman Way, just now on the way to class, and police stop me. And I decided that I was just going to send him love. And you know what? He didn't give me a ticket. Said, That's interesting. I don't feel that way. <laughs> so then this girl came in, a young girl, about 15, 20 minutes later, and she said, oh my God, this cops are out to get me, man. I just got a ticket. I wasn't even doing anything. And he gave me this ticket for speeding. It's so unfair. And I related more to that at the time, with that at the time, but there it was in front of me. Change your thinking, change your life. So, if you're gonna come up with an affirmation, if you say, I don't want tickets, the universe might just hear, tickets. And you might get more tickets, because that wasn't really working for me. So, I spent a little time with this, and I came up with, the police have no interest in me. And I have no interest in the police. I love the police, and they love me. Now, I worked with this for almost four years. I had a little forgiveness work to do with the police. <laughs> now, every time I saw the police, and I thought I was going to get a ticket, and I could feel that energy, I started to do the affirmation. Every time I thought about a ticket, I started to do that affirmation. You know, and the spiritual work comes in letting go and forgiving. So, I'm driving down Burbank Boulevard, and at Burbank and Van Nuys, a few times I've been stopped there, mostly for cell phone, and I'm driving to the intersection on my way to church, and being the spiritual giant that I am, I'm arguing with somebody on my phone, <laughs> and I'm not paying attention to what's around me. And what happens? Lights, sirens, the whole deal. Motorcycle cop, the shiniest boots, the most mirrored sunglasses, and, the, and this wonderful helmet, all of it, all of it. Pulls me over. He goes, he spends 10 or 15 minutes, he's talking on his cell phone, and, and I'm just, oh my God. Now the minute I saw those lights, I felt like I was on the primrose path, that it was all going for naught. And I knew it wasn't the time to do the affirmations. I went for God is the love that I am, which we did in the meditation. When my daughter was three, we drive around the car, I had the CD of God is the love that I am, and she'd say, Dad, Dad, put in God is the love that I am. Now she's 10, she says, Dad, put on my radio station. <laughs> you know, right? <clears throat> so he comes back. And he spends another 10 minutes explaining to me every aspect of the new cell phone law. How you can't swipe, it's got to be mounted on the dashboard on a magnet, and, and you got to have an earpiece and all the stuff. And then he looks at me. Now the whole time I'm still saying, God is the love that I am. He looks at me and he says, Mr. Carpenter, I'm going to give you a warning. Now, I forgot to tell you, at the time... My license was expired. <laughs> My registration was expired, and it didn't have any car insurance, right? So I was feeling it. I was feeling it. And he says, Mr. Carpenter, I'm going to let you go with a warning today. I choked up so much, I almost started to cry when I wanted to tell him, thank you. I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. And he looks at me, and he says, Mr. Carpenter, you look like you needed a break today. Now, my practitioner naturally said, and I agreed with her, you know, that was God in disguise as a motorcycle cop. Now, you might think I'm walking the primrose path here of delusion, and that it doesn't always work that way so good. So, the next time, I drive my daughter to Culver City, school in the morning, and so it's a, it's a hassle, and you know the traffic here and stuff, right? And there's one place where it says, do not turn right, 7 to 9 a.m. But if we turn right there, we save about 10 minutes. And sometimes 10 minutes can be a big deal on going over the hill and getting somebody to school on time. So, out of the bushes, 
walks a motorcycle cop, not the same one, different one. And this time, I, I don't say anything. I, I don't, it's probably surrendered the whole thing. God has love that I am. He writes the ticket. I sign the ticket. While I'm signing the ticket, he says, you a painter? I say, yeah. He says, you driving your little girl's school? I said, yeah. I get him back the ticket, and I've signed it, right? He says, you know, I don't have to give you this ticket. You know, we're just here because this guy has been complaining about people driving on his street. I don't have to give you this ticket. I'm not gonna. You go ahead and go. So, we're driving away, and he waved. Not just a little bit, he waved till we were out of sight. You know? Please have no interest in me. I love the police. The police love me. <laughs> True story. This is church. It wasn't. <laughs> so, everyone has that area they need to work on. You come up with your own affirmations. Work with a practitioner. I think this is the greatest teaching that Science of Mind has so much to offer this world. So let's pray. Knowing that the power and presence of God is with us right here and right now. It always has been and always will be. For this presence is the love and the light and the peace and the joy and the beauty that is this life. This eternal, everlasting goodness of Godness is manifest in all that is. It is within you, it is within me, all beings everywhere. For each of us is created in this spirit, created in the image and likeness of spirit itself. This power of choice and creation lives in everything we do, say, and think. That goodness of Godness is manifest in perfect health and divine healing of Anything known or unknown, our bodies, this planet, all heal. Whether it be an ache or a pain or some condition that needs change, spirit moves in, takes over, and restores our minds and bodies to divine perfection with the ease and grace that is beyond understanding, regardless of our past or whatever. Others may say, for all things are possible in God. This same goodness of Godness brings forth a new creativity in us that manifests as perfect jobs, perfect career, that situation that prospers us and our planet, supplying every need from our individual life to the needs of our planet, all creative all creativity flows through me now, bringing forth a new prosperity in our life with money and health. Solutions come and fill us with joy and gratitude about this life. Prosperity is our divine right, and I claim this for myself and for all people everywhere. The goodness of Godness flows through my relationship and all relationships, situations that seem stuck are broken, are healed on a personal level in every aspect of our society with the police, in politics, whether it be one-on-one -on -one or between countries. Love heals all. And we allow this love to move through us right here and now. Whatever our attention right now Whatever has our attention right now, we bring that into our mind and we ask Spirit to help us with our intention. And it's being overcome. And we do that now. And with love and gratitude, we accept this. We bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, knowing that all paths lead to the same God and the same group and the same truth. Thank you.
service for our affirmative giving. For those of you who have hung in there with us online, <laughs> you have several ways that uh, you can give. So uh, one is if you'd like to call the church number after service, we'll be here for about 15 minutes. That's area code 818-762-7566. Or you can go to our website, nhcrs.org forward slash Give, and that takes you straight to the page where you can make a one-time or recurring donation. Or, and this is also for anyone in the sanctuary, if you have a silenced cell phone, you can also text the word GIVE to area code 818-457-3419. And uh, for those of you here, we have uh, boxes at the back in the foyer as you're exiting the sanctuary at the end of service where you can drop off your donations. And as we say week after week, just thank you, thank you, thank you for all the ways that you continue to support our community. So with that, feeling our intentions of sharing and giving, let's hold our gifts to our hearts as we say together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you.
ready for my close-up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, boy. Well, again, thank you all. Thank you for hanging in there while we were having these technical issues. And Mr. <laughs> You, you did it <laughs> under not the most ideal circumstances, but see, we get, when we pick our topics, <laughs> we were warned of this in ministerial school, you pick a subject and you are going to have to live it. <laughs> so, oh, well, first, as we wind down the service, uh, I want to say thank you to everyone who was of service this evening. Um, here in the sanctuary, thank you as always to Adam back there in the sound room. <laughs> and then our technical team. <laughs> Boy, did you work fast. So we've got Blair Thompson, we've got Dory Limo, Brenda Jordan, <laughs> Mark Kroll. Thank you all. And again, beautiful, beautiful support from our beloved Tina and Sam. <laughs> And one more time. <laughs> and to all of you here, all of you out there who are with us, thank you so much. Uh, out there in virtual land, I want to thank Bob Lyon for uh, holding vigil for us this evening, uh, for Facebook Live support from Melissa Allen, and uh, also for our Zoom support, Alma Alcades, who's our North Hollywood host, Diane Satterley, who is a Zoom host, and Mark Kroll out there as our Zoom associate here in the sanctuary with us. Uh, is there anyone that I've missed? I think, hopefully, we're complete. Okay. I can move on to our announcements. Uh, first of all, Tina's music is available on iTunes. Uh, so many, so many wonderful, inspiring. Um, songs out there that uh, if you want to take advantage of that. Again, a reminder of ways uh, to make donations over the phone, 818-762-7566, uh, uh, nhcrs.org forward slash give, and 818-457-3419. Uh, I should, and I do know it by heart now, uh, if you want to text the word give to that number. And we're just reminding folks also that a way that you can give to the church that's uh, easy and is just if when you're um, doing Amazon purchases, if you sign up for Amazon Smile and designate our church as a place to uh, receive donations, part of the money that you spend, we get a little donation off of that and it doesn't cost you anything extra. So. Uh, just uh, another way that we can be supported and again thank you thank you for the ways that you continue to support us so we can be here for you prayer with a practitioner as Bill spoke about uh, is available um, here in the sanctuary we have at least one practitioner here who is available to pray with you and uh, also, if we're unable to get you here in the sanctuary, just leave your name and number, and we will give you a call afterwards to pray with you out there in virtual land. Uh, if you stay on Zoom, or if you're on Facebook Live, connect to Zoom. We will connect you with a practitioner one-on-one -on -one for prayer. You can email your prayer requests to prayer at nhcrs.org. And uh, you can call into the church office and option four on our phone menu allows you to leave a message with your prayer request. And we send, uh, we check those messages and emails and send those out to our practitioners every evening. Next Wednesday, August 18th, same time, same place, same channels, <laughs> only we will be on camera next week, right? Everything, we are affirming right here, right now, Bill, you're joining us in affirming <laughs> that everything will work technically. Um, and uh, so meditation is at 6.50, service is at 7 p.m. And uh, our guest speaker is practitioner Mary Hyland, and I'll be joining her, and her topic is 
what I learned on my COVID non-vacation. <laughs> Celebration of Life uh, service for our beloved Taryn McEwen, who made her transition a few months back, uh, will be this coming Saturday, the 14th, at 4 p.m. here in the Sanctuary, and it will also be um, streamed on Zoom. The Zoom link is available on our website, nhcrs.org. All are welcome. Feeding the Homeless, our Love and Kindness Ministry will be feeding the homeless this Sunday. And if you're interested in knowing more about that ministry or would like to support it, please visit our website and you can get more information about that. We have a workshop coming up with Reverend Nadine, Women, Food, and God Workshop with, uh, as I said, Reverend Nadine. And by the way, men are welcome at this workshop. Uh, you can sign up on our website, and uh, it's based on the book of the same name by Janine Roth. And the cost for the workshop is $30, and the book is available on Amazon. Our youth church reopens this coming Sunday, the 15th. We're really excited to be welcoming back our youth, ages 3 through 18. Um, so it will be this Sunday, the 9.45 a.m. service, our one service at this time. And parents who have children uh, under the age of three are welcome to use the mommy, daddy, and me room at the back of the sanctuary. Zoom virtual patio will continue after the service. Uh, for those of you who are joining us virtually, want to connect with your con fellow congregants, just uh, stay on Zoom or hop over from Facebook Live to Zoom to visit after service and before services, Sunday and Wednesday. Our men's group meets every Sunday from 11 to 11.30 a.m. on Zoom. All men are welcome. And our Zoom meditation continues every Monday through Saturday, 8 to 8.15 a.m. With that, I think, are we pretty much ready to wrap up? Yeah? few nods, please. <laughs> With that, uh, let me invite Bill up to give us our benediction, and then Tina will lead us in our final chant. Thank you again for being with us. Thank you. Really, it's an honor to be here tonight. Um, so as we just, one more time, we just go within, and we know that that hour and presence of God is with us right here, right now. It's the greatest part of who we are. We're made in the image and likeness of this spirit. So we know that anything that separates us from this spirit is not the truth. And we affirm and we pray and we bring our minds and our lives back into alignment with all that is holy and sacred, the goodness of Godness that is already within us. So I know that our journey home is safe and that we all had an opportunity to hear exactly what it was that we needed to hear. So with love and gratitude, I release this word into the law of mind, knowing that it is done, that it is so, that all is well now and forevermore. And together we say, Amen. Thank you.